Optimizing our builds at endgame heavily relies on RNG since we need a handful of key sigils which tremendously can strengthen our repertoire. Three of these sigils which we'll be discussing later on can only be obtained by appraising curios, an item that randomly drops from a quest as a quest rewards. I'm the Samurai and we will be going over the most reasonable methods when farming curios, best practices, and more tested these methods for hours to save you the hassle and present you the results. But first things first, let's go over what are these three best offensive sigils that you can only get from curios. The first one is Supplementary Damage Trade as the name implies adds a possible bonus attack on top of your regular attacks. At level 45, it will give you 100% chance to deal the extra damage mentioned. This applies to skill as well and the additional damage you get from it is separate from your damage cap calculation, making it one of the strongest sigil in the game. Now moving on to the next one, this is by far the best sigil in the game in my opinion since it gives the wearer a permanent ability to deal superior elements to targets. Meaning that you will always be dealing elemental weaknesses to enemies and ultimately deal stronger damage in general. One good thing about this sigil is that it only requires one slot for you to take advantage of its maximum effect and this is indeed the war elemental sigil. The next exclusive sigil would be Glass Cannon. This is pretty much interesting since at trait level 15, you will be able to enjoy 30% additional attack boost and 30% damage cap. We all know that the more damage cap you have, the better, so this sigil is a nice to have. However, upon getting hit, your character will be stunned right away, so use this with caution. I see this sigil having a lot of value for no damage runners like myself, so it is a pretty good addition to your repertoire. Okay, moving on to the next one and of course, there are other non-exclusive notable sigils and materials that you can get from Curios but what I want to focus on is damage cap sigils. Damage cap sigils play a pivotal role in increasing your damage especially at endgame and again, I will be making a dedicated video exploring this topic since it has its depth. You can also get like other exclusive sigils in here but for the sake of the video, I just mentioned these four. I mean, Damage Cap is not an exclusive sigil but you can also get it from here while farming curios. You will have a decent amount of chance of getting these from curios making it another thing to look forward to. Now that the exclusive sigils are out of the way, let's move on to my suggested setup. There are three main methods or spots where I farm my curios, two of them are being done in auto or AFK farming if you prefer this term and one is a manual play or active playing. The build or party composition that I'm suggesting is mainly for the AFK or auto grinding since you can do any setup when you are actively farming these curios. I decided to include auto farming and active farming methods to suit all types of needs out there since we do have different situations as human beings. Use these to your advantage. Now moving on to my setup, Rackham is a must, he is the key character in almost every auto farming, especially when farming in nodes outside of Maniac difficulty. So as you can see, my Rackham is just wearing the things that I have to make him viable in these farms. So make sure you slot him with your extra damage caps and damage multipliers since almost all of my strongest sigils have been slotted into my main DPS. You can make Rackham your main DPS if you wish to do so and make him as strong as possible. Let's have a quick rundown of his skills, I'm not saying these are the optimal ones, this is just the ones that are working well on my end. I selected Coffin Maker for continuous damage, Spitfire so he can inflict defense down to targets, Double Tap for more extra damage when he uses his normal attacks, and lastly, Wild Gunsmoke for additional attack and critical hit chance buffs. Rackham is the best choice for these auto farms for obvious reasons like he is a ranged DPS, he does have a decent range so when in auto, you will not have to worry about moving your stack and he will delete enemies right off the bat. For my other characters, I chose Percival to be the team's damager buffer character and his Flamin' Marsh skill, I hope that I pronounce it again, can stack with Cagliostro's Phantasmagoria so that is an option as well. Yugen is another ranged DPS and can also paralyze enemies, making runs faster. And lastly, my main DPS is Narmaya since she's my main. Your main DPS can be anyone since this is a personal choice. Now moving on to equipment suggestions. I advise having all weapons between 125 to level 150 level range and at least 100% on mastery boards in terms of attack and defense. If you are having a hard time getting mastery points, I did a progression guide on how to access the best farming spots in the game so be sure to check the card here and I'll link it in the description section as well. One thing to keep in mind though is the stronger your characters are, the faster your auto runs will be 
so I suggested the necessary upgrades above as a base point before you do these runs. Before the actual methods, you need to know how to auto farm. I will be making a proper AFK farming guide for every key materials or currency in the game so stay tuned for that. But for now, for you to do auto farming, go to your settings, head to your gameplay, and set to difficulty to story. Once you have done that, turn the next settings to full assist mode and you are done. This will enable you to do auto farm. Now that is out of the way, let's move on to the actual method. Now for the first farming spot, which is the next hot topic, what I usually do is access and have auto runs done between very hard and extreme difficulty quests depending on what materials I need. So technically every quest here that you can do efficiently will do however make sure that the arena has a limited range so Rackham can attack the boss right away. I also do auto farming in maniac difficulty especially when hunting silver centrums but this is a completely different video. When I do not have a specific material in mind I usually go to the quest the next hot topic which is a very hard difficulty quest. This is my main go-to quest especially when farming curios alone. This quest lasts around 30 to 40 seconds and has a high chance of dropping curios. Now to start the auto farming, just start the quest and let the AI do its work. The runs that you are seeing here are full auto aside from the last method. One thing that you need to make sure of is the quest will be set on auto repeat so the quest will run up to 10 runs. Rinse and repeat and you will be accumulating curios in no time. This is where I farm my 70 plus curios straight and acquire supplementary damage sigil 5 and war elemental as well in the process. On the what if method 1 is too much for you and rather not efficient or for some reason you want to auto farm at early game. But before the next step if you are into straight to the point guides, tips and tricks like this one, subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button and it will tremendously help me a lot. Consider joining the Empire today and your support is greatly appreciated. Now on to the next step. If this is the case, I suggest running the hard quest, Delt of Our Lives. I highly suggest this quest since the raw material Broken Savage Sword is one of the key materials to easily trade Silver Centrums later on while having a chance to score Curios in the process. Runs in the quest will be faster since the boss will rush at you and your party members will delete the boss right away. Moving on to the third spot and also the last spot as well. I tend to do my active runs using my main character and play multiplayer on Saga Illustrated Hellfire which is a maniac difficulty quest. Multiplayer runs usually last around 38 seconds to a minute and in almost every run, curios will be dropping. Also the main reason why this is one of the best spot in farming curios is you will be spending most of your time here since all of the materials basically in this quest are in high demand, especially when upgrading your damage cap sigils and weapons as well. Especially the dreaded tail material is really in high demand plus you will have a chance to get silver centrum in the process. Maybe it's just RNG but I noticed as well that curious specifically from this quest drops offensive types of sigils but maybe it's just RNG. Let me know if you have information on this one and share it to the community. That's it for this guide and I want to be as concise as possible and let me know if you have better spots when farming curios. Hope everyone will get their war elemental sigils and supplementary damage sigils soon to make the most out of this game. Now if you want to be better in the game in general or have the best start possible as a beginner, click the videos here and I will see you on the next one.